All right. So this is a, uh, for anyone who's just listening, this is a new segment called Songs Nick Should Not Try to Sing. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna attempt it because I know Jack would probably want to hear it. So. No, no. No, there we go. Uh, okay. When Jack it's recall on the podcast and the boys start to ramble on. Oh, I want to be there on the ramble cast. Oh, 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 oh. I thought it was one of your best yet. That was great. I thought it was awesome. Well, thanks, I'm playing guys. the rest of my head right now because I, I won't attempt to sing it. But yeah, well. yeah. I mean, it's no actually those, those are actually fairly standard chords. It's just the fact the way that Steve Perry just hits it to the max. You know. He's only he's only good for second though. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Steve. Um. Yeah. So tonight we're gonna try and keep this one tight, thirty to forty minutes. Chris has an early. Uh, get up, wake up, call tomorrow, and I'm dying. Indeed, I'm feeling terrible, Jackson Glaffelder. Terrible. It's fat. My my daughters, when one of them goes, "Why are you sick?" and I went, Let's "I see. don't know." I've had I've had four <laughs> gr- I've had four grandkids coming over with their nose running like a faucet, constantly oh, cleaning up snot. It. And it's, it's keeping you healthy though, Jack. And it's coughing in my immune system, coughing in my face. Yeah. John says no one cares. I know they <laughs> They're coughing. I, I go, dude, can you cu-? my my grandson goes, Wah! I go, dude. Stop. Not only did you cover my face, can you cover your mouth? Do the el- the vampire that whatever you have to do nowadays. And he just looks at me. So why am I sick? I don't know. Matt K says we're all dying. No, this is my time to die. This is my time to die. You guys, I don't want I don't want to because that's what's gonna happen to me. I know it's gonna happen. I'm going to die on a day where like 20 million people die and the check-in line for the, the, you know, the golden gates is going to be way backed up. You know, the processing, I'm going to be standing in a fucking line all, all day long. You know what, uh, Jack, you know what, Jack, you know, who's going to be the first person in your line. Who? Harold Garneau. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll have a lot, we'll have a lot to talk about. Oh, yeah. bullshit. He's not making it. Yeah. Hey, what are we talking about? Uh. <laughs> You, you can rise up, you know, and be like, oh, so now you've heard me. <clears throat> I mean, how do they process it? I mean, it's, you know, it's a lot of people up there, right? You don't want anyone sneaking in that shouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. That's all I got about that. So I, I went and did something. I'm not sure if I showed it to you guys on, my, on our last show or not. but uh, I you, talked, you talked about it. I talked about it? Well, let, let me let me show it to you all real yeah. quick. I'm, I'm going to jump, jump in on my phone here and see if I can... Do a second screen. <laughs> Fuck you, Randy. Oh, there's no way he's he'll be he's in the gates of hell. <coughs> yeah, yeah. He's Hopefully, I don't pass out coughing. So, anyway, Dean Spanos. There's no way that fucker's going to heaven. <laughs> Fucking sinner. I, I think that about everybody. You know, uh, yeah, it's just like I think I said that what a few weeks back about George Carlin. It's one of the things I always remember about him is that he's like, you know what I hate about fun- you know, we know what I hate about funerals. And he's like, there's always some asshole out there that goes, he's probably oh, I was thinking you were gonna build or anyway, he's probably you know, you know, he's looking down on us right now and smiling, you know, and he's like, yeah. how the fuck do you know? <laughs> you know like, <laughs> anyway, I know I thought you were gonna about your computer, Chris. Not uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to flip the camera around. Oh, okay. You should look like a but, fly right now. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Anyways. John says, I think those were the gates Randy was talking about. Okay. If that's the case, Randy, I- I'm okay with it. But why am I going to hell? Why am I sticking my tongue out? I'm not. That's weird. Oh, it's a cable. <laughs> ah. Oh, but it picked up your tongue? Yeah. Let's <laughs> hope it's his tongue. That was awesome. <laughs> Hey, see now, now it's appropriate. It's blurred. Yeah. I hope it doesn't. I hope it doesn't pick up your penis. That's awesome. 
<laughs> well, I mean, you need a micro, micro, what do you call it? Microscope for that. I mean, it's very, it's very colorful. You know, yeah. Computer. So, I'll, I'll, I'll do a little. So, what is this? This is a computer. Yeah, I built a computer. Oh, you um, built a computer. That's... Yeah. So it's it's for gaming specifically. Yeah. You're gonna be like um, George Costanza's dad. You're gonna compete against uh, Apple and Microsoft. Yeah. Do you sure. remember that episode? <laughs> no, no, no. Now. Serenity now. Anywho, let me um and unmute that. That sounds much better. Yeah. Okay. Um, so here's a little walkthrough of what I built. So this is like a a big huge, you know, computer case, if you will. Um so it actually I mean that disappeared, right? Oops, sorry. So it's half just... so a good half of it is just glass, so as you can see it. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's got um Oh, it's completely two... covered. Yeah, yeah, I, I was thinking the... only half of it built until I until you moved it there. And I saw the glare. I was like, "Oh, it is." Yeah, yeah sorry. So two of the panels oh, now I see are it. glass, mm -hmm. right? Uh, inside, it's got you you a know, little bit of echo there, uh, Chris. Oh shit! Inside, it's got um, you know three fans in the front, which yeah. kind of suck air in to cool down the computer. Uh, RGB lights. The RAM sticks actually have RGB lights on them too, which I thought was kind of unnecessary, but also awesome uh and that there is my uh cpu cooler that mm -hmm. runs um liquid through these tubes up to a radiator that ejects the hot air through the top nice yeah and my video card so what what, what are you playing on a pc these days uh well i'm playing let's see i can turn this shit off right yeah go back to here um so i've been playing um uh, a little bit of Call of Duty. There's this game called Hell Divers that's gotten uh, it released earlier this month, and it's gotten like a ton of like uh, coverage and press from people who've been playing it. But oh, um, yeah. it's uh, Pong, yeah, playing Pong too. Um, battles, and it's only available on PlayStation and PC. I don't have a PlayStation. I have an Xbox, but I've always wanted to kind of build a, like a gaming rig just to mm. do it. Um, like a like a hobbyist type thing, um, so I did it, yeah, and I, I did it for, you know, relatively short money, comparatively speaking, to some of the computer builds that are out there. But um, yeah, it was just kind of a little a little hobby thing to to build it, put it together. So you built the it parts. from scratch, but there's something on the internet that gives tells you what parts to buy. Yeah, so I used um, I use a variety of sources. There's a great website called PCPartPicker.com where you can kind of like put things together and map it all out and they can give you links to Amazon and all that type of stuff. Um, but I also, I have a, a bunch of, you know, employees and, and coworkers that um, kind of have been in the, the PC gaming for a while. So just got their advice and did a little bit of research and found what I wanted to do based upon how much money I did and didn't want to spend. Um, and I bought the parts from various different locations, Amazon, you know, Newegg, Micro Center, a bunch of places. And put it all together. I actually ran into an issue though with it um, late last week, or we going to the weekend, where the the motherboard that I purchased um, was was shit the bed. It was just I just got a, a bad board. Bad board. Yeah. So I had to disassemble the whole thing. <laughs> was it used? Uh, no, it wasn't used. It was just it wasn't no, it wasn't functioning the way it was. So I had to disassemble the computer and reassemble it again after I picked up a new motherboard. And at that point is where I bought the. The flashy RAM, which is kind of cool. It is but, nice. Uh, how many hours of labor labor are we talking about here? Uh, in total, or yeah. how much it should have taken, or how much did it take me? How long did it take you? <laughs> um, in total, probably about three and a half hours, four hours. That's not bad at all. No, no, it's not bad. I mean, it, it's not that complex. You know, it, once you kind of figure out what you're doing, it's like it, a lot of the the, the time-consuming stuff is the wire management and cable management just to make sure yeah. that it's not, you know, shitty. Um, and then on top of that, you know, configuring software drivers, um, installing Windows, that 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 stuff takes the the boring time. We're sitting there waiting for all that stuff to, to install. Um, but uh, yeah, it, I mean, if I didn't have to rebuild it again, it would have been much shorter. But it was, yeah, it was fun. I enjoyed it. It is cool. I mean, anytime I, I I tend to find assembling things, except for furniture, to be fairly therapeutic. You know, it's, right. Uh, I like it because like, I, I don't think I sent it to Jack because Jack doesn't give a shit about Legos. But, uh, you know, that's what I did this weekend. I put together. You send me jokes. I send you jokes. <laughs> I, I, send you, I send Jack specific jokes that I know he will laugh at. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I, I assembled the, uh, the Lego NES system. Yeah, I saw that. It looked awesome. 
and, uh, and then I, and then the Bowser as well. Uh, Cause you know, I originally had never thought about buying the NES until I saw the Bowser uh, at Comic-Con and I went, okay, I want to buy the NES now just so I can put the, the controller in Bowser's hand. That was it. That was the whole idea. And then I was like, okay, so I'm buying them both just to do that. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah. It's, those are both actually very fun builds. The NES part, the actual, it's, you know, it's a great block, you know, but it is neat how they made all the gears to put the game in there and, and make it, the press it down and all that. But yeah, the, uh, the TV set, you know, with all the motion it does around and then yeah. the Bowser, the Bowser is, I was shocked how, how many fucking pieces come in that thing. And then when you're done, you pick it up, it weighs a good two pounds. You're like, yeah, cause it's, it's not hollow. He, he's no, solid. It's, it's solid. Yeah. It's right. solid. And like his arms and his head and his mouth, all that shit moves and articulates, you know, you know, you know what's funny about the Nintendo, right? So you mentioned that, you know, it has, it has the mechanics where you can like put the game in and press it down. Um, did you know? <laughs> <laughs> that you didn't need to push it down to play it. You mean the original one? Yeah, uh, but yeah. In the the cartridge. Well, I mean the pins. It was. It was. They go. It was to, a, yeah, it slides directly into the pins. Yeah, but I guess I never tried it. No, no, it, you, it you don't need to. It, huh. it, it, it was. It was a completely like a cosmetic feature that you didn't actually need to push it down to to play the game. Huh. Man, lying to us again. Jeez. Right. Also, fun tidbit. When you're playing Duck Hunt, if someone picks up the controller in, in the controller two port, you can yeah, you control, control the, the fucking duck. <laughs> really? I didn't know that either. I, I learned that from, from Seth Rogan on like on uh Oh really? <laughs> like TikTok. Yeah. That I was like, right. that's amazing. I've known that for years. I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, like uh what's sad though about it is especially with Duck Hunt, Hogan's Alley. And there's a, there's a you know there's a couple other ones like super paintball or something. gun smoke <laughs> so, yeah like all the you know the the gun does not work on modern televisions you actually have to have a, a light TV. emitting diode yeah, yeah not 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 light emitting diode uh, a cathode sense. ray TV yeah uh, so it's sad that it's like oh you have to actually find a so an you old need a Sony TV. Trinitron right yeah yeah <laughs> yeah seriously yeah I used to make them um, Randy said that I like to assemble Kia stuff IKEA stuff no I don't. No, no and it's funny you say that because my wife ordered another sandbox for the kids. We don't have enough sand all over the place. And she goes, this one's bigger. And I go, they can sit in it. It turned out it wasn't. But I get I get the box. I open it up. I go, it's broken. And she goes, what do you mean it's broken? I go, well, there's all these pieces in here. She goes, you have to put it together. I go, a plastic sandbox I have to put together? <laughs> what the fuck is this? I had to put the top together, the bottom together. And the pieces are, you know, it's plat. So you're trying to, I'm like, this is a bunch of crap. That's so, funny. yeah, I had to put, and it wasn't any bigger. So now we have two sandboxes where the sand's all over the place. And oh, she goes, can you do something about that sand? I go, yep, I'll go get the leaf blower and blow the sand away. <laughs> anyway, but I, I do want to learn how to build a radio just in case I'm ever in a, a German prison camp. <laughs> yeah. Just, just putting that out there. He made it look so easy, didn't he? You know? Yeah. Oh, I just, I, what I just, are you referring I, to? I just move it a little bit. Uh, it's the next to last episode of uh, of uh, Masters of the Air. Masters oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta, I gotta catch that. I, I, there's so many shows and documentaries that I've been like just saying add to queue, add to queue. Just I know I'm gonna, I want to watch it at some point, but the list is getting longer and longer. Like there's that documentary I completely forgot existed until it popped up on Netflix. So it's like homepage was the. Uh, American Gladiators um, oh, documentary. That's excellent. That's excellent. I thought you recommended it. Like I did recommend ago. it. I yeah. recommended it when I heard about it. <laughs> but didn't it I had... recommend it because I watched it. Well, but yeah, it hadn't come out yet. Yeah. It wasn't me. I know that. I, I watched it and recommended it. Oh, maybe I was not there. But like, um, but I remember hearing all about it. Never, never seeing it. It's pretty. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. I, I yeah really enjoyed it. I'm about to watch that. I was I'm on. I, I, I'm on I, the I last wanted... three or four episodes of Better Call Saul. There oh, you nice. go. Uh, yeah, Kim, I start. Uh, go ahead. I was gonna say Kim just fucking flew the coop, or she's about to flow the coop. Um, well, she's made, reverting back to her. That made childhood. me sad, dude. That made me sad. I, now, I actually felt for him. That's how she was as a kid, right? And then he woke up with a hooker and a flash forward. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler. Now, I, I I was fucking with you when you texted us about the certain character that dies, uh, and but I wasn't sure if Jack or Matt was confused when you wrote 
I was shit. confused. Hashtag, you know, the name. And you know, I was like, I was like, like I, I, knew, I, knew, I, knew, I knew immediately what Chris was talking about. Oh, like, yeah. I, you know, I, I just, I just drew a blank and I go, I'm not going to say who I, you know, what I said, but, but I if go, there's, the if there's any character, about? if there's any character in Better Call Saul slash Breaking Bad, I ever felt sorry for it's that character, you know, because, oh my God. Yeah. Like he's like, he's actually like the night, he's like the closest good, thing to a good person on that guy, show. He was kind of a dick. So he's a no, dick, but he's doing what's best for the firm. Yeah. You know? Yes. And I don't, I can't fault him for that. No. Nope. You know, because he was on, he was on, uh, why am I forget what Saul's real name is? Uh, Jimmy. Jimmy. Yeah, you know, he's on Jimmy's side. You know, when Jimmy's young, you know, he, he's always you know tried to yep. counter him against his brother. And then, yeah, when when Jimmy starts becoming Saul, yeah, you better believe he's trying to put him rein him back in. But he's just trying to do what's best for Jimmy and the firm the whole time. And then you find out in the in a later later seasons the big reveal that his wet his marriage is in shambles yeah. and he's sleeping in like in the guest house or whatever. So you're like he's going through well, all a, this it's a, bullshit. It's a, ni- it's a nice house. Yeah, yeah, well, whatever. But he's going through all this bullshit with the firm and with Chuck um, in the whole the whole thing and with Jimmy, and uh, but you know it was Kim that wanted to do it. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. And that's what I mean. I think yeah. I mean, it's kind of what we were talking about a few weeks ago. That's what's interesting about the dynamic of those two characters. Is yeah. Jimmy is mostly bad, but wants to be good, but can't. Whereas in him is good, but because of her upbringing, she still wants that little part of her to be dirty. And all yeah. she needs is that little push over the edge from Jimmy to really make it happen. And she can be even worse than Jimmy. You know, yeah. like, holy shit. She's yeah. cutthroat. Um, uh, yeah. John retired asked me if I watched Poor Things yet. I have not watched it. It's on my list, but it's sad that you thought it was the stupidest movie ever because she won an Oscar for it. <laughs> she won her second Oscar because, you know, she's a Padres fan. So A Padres? Padres. She's a Padres fan. A oh, Padres. Ah, yeah. okay. Her husband's from San Diego. I heard Padres. I'm like, Star Wars? <laughs> <You're> like, what? <laughs> I, I, I've forgotten about pod racing. Yeah. <laughs> pod racing, yes. Uh, oh, spe- it, speaking of pod racing, sorry, tangents galore. Um, the kid who played um, Anakin, which one? Yeah, uh, young, the, the young the Anakin, Luke. I mean, not Luke. <laughs> the, kid, the kid with the bull hair. Uh, Jake, yeah. Jake Lloyd. That's the one. You know, I, I had heard he had kind of gone off the deep end and went yeah. through like a crazy he depression. Crazy. Crazy. Um, but I actually read recently that he's actually kind of gotten his shit together and he's in a yeah. much better place, which is. Uh, I think good, that's what's here. It's kind of like, uh, was like it, what, what, what happened? Know? It was just the, the backlash bad, from bad, bad parents, backlash, uh, just a lot of stuff, just too fast, too soon. Uh, he's drugs. one of the most hated characters in movie history. And the thing is, he didn't do <laughs> he did the role. I thought, fine, I thought he did you know? a pretty good job. Uh, yeah. I like I said, I, I've never understood the hate for episode one. Uh, I get it if you hate Jar Jar Banks, totally. Uh, it's the worst part of the film, but if you watch it just as a plot, as a story, it's it's pretty solid. You know, like if yeah. you just take take Jar Jar out of it and just you know, it's actually like Episode Two by far is the worst of the prequels. But, mm. uh, yeah, it's a shame that people turn on a kid like that. I mean, it's, come on, yeah, yeah. I, know, I, I don't exactly. I've, I've always agreed with most people when when because there's always people that bash online and people are like, oh, you just hate the. I was like, no, I was like. It's like even with the sequels, which I hate all three of those films. Like I don't ever hate the actor. The actor's just doing their job. It's the way that they're written. It's the you know the lines that they have to deliver that are sometimes just how they're awful. how they're told to. to yeah, they're do, just doing. I mean, they're just there's doing only their so, job. There's only so many yeah. actors that have control over their right. careers. It's, I mean, you know, you're, you're like a De Niro. You're not going to tell him what to do. Oh, I'm but in the beginning, he had to be told. So. Anyway, I have not seen Poor Things. Only the only movie I ever. Oh, seen. I just now realized that Chris is actually Chris. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's not. No, exactly. I'm not. No. Oh, oh, it's just it's throwing me off because I don't the, have the halo. These are the streamyard b- backgrounds. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Cindy uh, and I started a Ted Lasso rewatch. Really? Okay. Yeah. I didn't, um, I, you, you, you didn't, you didn't want to go with uh, Mash. I I watch Mash on my own. She doesn't like Mash, um, but yeah, it's funny. I, I you sit there and go, man, Nate was a just a him become such a dick. He's a dick, when, yeah. When yeah. when Ted did so much for him and and uh, and that, Roy and yeah, Kent that, did so much for him, 
there's definitely flaws. I mean, I love Ted Lasso. I think it's a great three season show. But yeah, like there's definitely flaws. Nate's one of them, and the character development of that character. I loved him in season one, and then just for him to go full evil, you know, it, it didn't make sense. And then his, the redemption of him. The third, the third season, I felt was just not. It wasn't hashed out as much as it should have been. But uh, well, I still I like, like it a lot. So I what like I like it. about it, I think I said this. We talked probably talked about it first time around. Like is Ted such a positive person, but he's flawed? You know, he's he's got yeah. his own issues. He does. Everybody issues. Does, so, I, but but it's not one of those guys. That, you know, back in the if this was a show in the seventies, Ted would just be perfect. Yeah, he would. He'd just yeah. be. Oh, I be no, Yeah, there'd be no. I have panic attacks. I have this. I have that. Well, that's that's kind of what I've liked about modern storytelling is that people are not perfect. No, no one is perfect. And actually, I think that's where a lot of the going back to Star Wars uh, and a lot of some of these, especially the action, the uh, the Marvel type films. You know, maybe not the Marvel, but you know, a lot of those superhero films is I like the gray areas. I like that. Iron Man, you know, for example, is not a perfect character. You know, he's extremely flawed, you know, and, and that's because that's what makes us human is, and that's what makes us us. You he's going to win like, an Oscar someday, though. <laughs> I, I like, you know, there's, 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 there's actors, and then there's actors who don't break character into the DVD commentary, and Robert Downey Jr. is, is that guy. I thought, I thought, you know, he won the, uh, I didn't watch, uh, uh, Jackson, so we, I didn't, I didn't watch the Oscars. I haven't uh, watched him in years. Yeah. Um, but, uh, he won. Yeah. And then people were kept pointing back to his drug days. I go, yeah, I, I go, why do we have to bring that up? I, even Jimmy Kimmel said something on the show about it. I'm like, he did. Yeah. I, I go, he, I go, come on guys. And, and he must have approached him ahead of time. Cause I know that Robert Downey Jr. does not like talking no, about he, that. He doesn't want to talk about it. And you know, he, he had a rough stretch there for a while. He yeah. was act up and now he's one of the better actors we have working today. And I, I don't see why we had to, I mean, you were going. Congratulations, you know, uh, Robert Downey Jr. You, you should. Uh, they would show him in the the orange suit and winning the Oscar. Yeah, um, it's funny because I forgot that he kind of twenty years. Wow, I forgot that he kind of disappeared, you know, for a while because yeah. it's kind of like how you know I didn't watch uh, West Wing in my college years when that show was out and I was doing other shit, but. Uh, when I got out of college is when he made Kiss Kiss Bang Bang in 2005, and I love that movie. Uh, it's, it's it's Val Kilmer's last like really good film, uh, and it's it's it was it, it bombed. It didn't you know it got good reviews, but no one watched it. And I and I always loved that film. It's just so different. Um, Best movie ever made was one with Rodney Dangerfield. Which one's that? Um, yeah. What's it called? Matt Treese is here. He'll, he'll get it real quick. <laughs> Matt Treese is a famous diver. Uh, the, the, what's his name? Um, um, Karate Kid. Uh, Ralph the, Macho. No, no, no. The other the, uh, Johnny is is in the movie. Oh, Johnny! And plays a dick. Plays an <laughs> asshole. Oh, he's typecast, you know. But yeah, uh, back to school. Nice. Thank oh, you, John, the retired guy. I don't know why I, I couldn't remember that. that. I would say that movie. Oh, back to school. Oh, that's right. That's Dangerfield. Yes, great yes. movie. Great movie. The triple Wait, Lindy. It, the, the triple Lindy, as you say. <laughs> I mean, no, I've, I, this is probably the first year I can remember uh, where I'd only seen, I think, three of the Oscar. I films. saw one. The films that were nominated for the Oppenheimer. Oscar. Oppenheimer. I saw Oppenheimer, and um, I don't know. I remember what they all were. But I, I, I knew everyone knew Oppenheimer was going to win. So it was like, yeah. Right. I, mean, I, 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 I did the whole, like, who's your picks? And I think I got, like, 90%. You know, it was like, it was a safe year. Well, I know Bill Murray, was. he was on Saturday Night Live. He, he did this uh critics thing and he goes the Oscars are coming up blah 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 and he named the five movies because back then it was only five mm. he goes didn't see it didn't see it didn't see it didn't see it saw it judging by what I saw this one he <laughs> goes best supporting <laughs> actors and actresses nobody cares no one cares. <laughs> that's, right. yeah. that's funny uh shit. Matt Tree saw nine of the ten or he's saw ten and can recommend nine of the ten which one I'm sure, I'm sure they're can you not recommend, Matt? I think that's that's the you buried I, I, the lead there. Which of the which of the ten or did you would you not recommend? 
Maestro. 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 Okay, that's the one with the uh, okay. uh, guy What's from... Uh, um, yeah. Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper, yeah. I got it before anyone posted it. Yes! Yeah. I mean, like I said, like I... It was a weird year, you know. Well, coming off COVID and writer strike and everything else, it's just like, yeah. I mean, a lot of times, I you know, uh, I even said that if you can go back and check the tapes when I first saw the holdovers, and I recommended it to you guys, like, hey, I just saw the holdovers this weekend. I was like, yep. the, the, the black lady, I, which I'm sorry, I don't know her name. I was like, she's gonna win. I was like, because even though you have three outstanding performances in that movie, she completely steals that film. What film is that? The holdovers with oh, Paul Giamatti. I've not, did, I've not she, seen that yet. I she, won the, she won the Golden Globe and she won the uh, the Oscar for that's good. supporting actress. I mean, it's it's okay. It's it's a movie. Divine might... Joy Randolph. Thank you, thank you, Matt. Uh, Matt, Divine Joy Randolph. Yeah, uh, because it's cool. it's a movie that you'll watch it once, maybe twice, uh, because it is a good film, but it's it's a bit sad. Um, yeah, not it, it just because it's three characters that are a fault that's just really what it is you know it's like and what they're going through it's like two of the three on this podcast yeah (laughs) no i mean it's it's you know it's set in 1970 all three of them are dealing with their own issues uh and it's just it's just a good film but it's one of those things you're never going to be like i want to watch the whole do i want to be a hippie (laughs) do i not want to be a hippie yeah it is fantastic matt it is i liked oppenheimer i didn't think it was well, I, but I I can get why people didn't like it. I mean, I, I liked Oppenheimer. Uh, I felt it was just a tad long, and there's some things that could have been edited out. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a good film. Yeah. I I do think it's wildly wildly overrated. I don't oh, think it. Out. I don't. I don't think it's a picture. Best picture. Well, probably because uh, not a lot of them. There's a bunch again, of big pictures. Though, that, there was yeah. probably not a lot to compete with, right? No, there wasn't. There wasn't many. Like I, I've said that before in different years, where you know I oh, think it should. Oh, that's go back where I've seen her before. It okay. should go. Yeah, I was. Oh wait, I'm reading the wrong one. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think it should go back to five films. You know, but they're do they went to ten because they want to get people to watch. Oh yeah, I just some, saw a comment. Some film, you know, that made a lot of money but really wasn't groundbreaking cinema. Uh, they want to nominate for people to watch, but it's like it's you know something special. John, the retired guy, says, I didn't like Oppenheimer, but I did. Nobody cares, John. <laughs> Nobody cares, John, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm friends with John on, on Instagram, I think, now. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's, it's good to, It's good us, to right? see a crossover of people from the Facebook days to Instagram. That's pretty much all I'm on these days is Instagram. I don't, even though I don't post that much anymore. Yeah. But, uh, I I'm don't still on TikTok, but I, I don't know for how long. Yeah, it's not going to go anywhere. I mean, Facebook's 20 years old now. I mean, how many... That's crazy when you think about TikTok. Yeah, I'm pretty much... I, I, I go on TikTok just like once a day. I don't. I haven't been doing happy birthdays. I apologize. I fell behind and just said, you know what? I'm hey, you're, I'm you're doing better than chain. Chris, who never does birthdays. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck I'm you break, I'm breaking the chain. Yes, John, he started Instagram. And I'm also on... What's that other thing? Threads. Uh, threads, yeah. I'm on Threads, yeah, too. Yeah, it's a failed adventure. Yeah. I just I posted one thing on there and just I don't know. Yeah, Facebook's got to do something because I, it needs a it needs a facelift. I mean, because if you think about it, like the the vast majority of the users on Facebook are going to be dying soon. <laughs> like Damn, the new Chris. generation of like of no, I'm telling, I'm not you, Jack. But I'm talking like like the the, the a vast population of people who use Facebook are over the age of seventy right now. Oh really? And, yeah, there's a huge population, and and like quote unquote, I'm gonna use it my air quotes. Ding ding, kids these days don't give a fuck about Facebook. Oh no no no! Well, so like about... it, it, it's a dying mm-hmm. app. You know why? Because the parents got on there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, it's not cool. I yeah, I remember that when um I think my mom or my dad got on it for a little while, and they're they're not on anymore. But I remember them like sending me a face request. I'm like. Just so you know, I'm never going to approve this. And they're like, "Why?" I was like, "Because I, I don't want you stalking my profile." You know? Yeah. John, the retired guy, says you don't look as ghostly on Instagram. No, I don't. Which is better, right? 
Yeah, at this time, we're going to take a commercial break. Well, oh, shit, that came out of nowhere. <sighs> Trying to keep okay. this tight. She said. Uh, so, uh, I'll start another topic, man. Uh, I was, this is something Jack will probably like, and Chris, too. Uh, <coughs> it came out of nowhere. My sister texted me last night, and she never talks sports or thinks sports or anything. And she started off with, I can pretty much say who's the greatest basketball player of all time. You can probably debate between two people for the best golf player of all time. But who would you say is the best football player of all time? And I went, that's a whole can of worms. Wow. You know, uh, because I was like, it's a different sport. It's a team sport. You know, you could have a greatest player, but if their team sucks, then they're never going to be remembered for the that. I and, mean, I don't know, dude. It, well, I'm saying it's, it's, I'm saying it's highly debatable. That's what I'm saying. It's well, a debatable you, you topic. Look at, you, you look at how many people have, have, have played sports yeah. and never won an NBA championship. Right. You look right. At, like a Carl Malone and John Stockton. Yeah. Never won a championship. No, they did. Yeah. No. Did they win the 95? No. They won the Olympics. That's true. They won the Olympics, but they never won an NBA championship. Utah's That's never sad. won an NBA championship. And you, oh. you know, you could, I could put to the Chargers. Chargers have a long list of great players. Never even been to a Super Bowl. Right. That's what I'm saying. And, yeah. and it just, you know, so it's, it's tough. You have to have, it has to start at the top. You have to have an owner that wants to win. Right. And then you have to hire the right people. You know, you have to have the right GM, the right coach. And then you got to get luck. Like New England got lucky and drafted uh, Tom well, Brady with the sixth pick. And it, it, right. Six and round that's- pick. But I also said with Tom Brady, he's lucky he didn't go to somewhere like Cleveland. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Super. It's, it's, all, it's, all, it's all fate. All, it's, yeah, it's because exactly. he, he goes to – because New England was a good – was going to the Super Bowl that year anyway. Yeah. That he he's, he came and played. If he goes to Cleveland, bad organization. That's just where players Bad franchise. Yeah, I mean, how many quarterbacks that they had and drafted and never made it? So my answer to my sister – and I, I, I'll tell you what, because I, I talked to my dad about this as well today, because I thought it was such a random Hold on, hold on a second. I, I, I said, sure. yeah, some of their players have never been to a Super Bowl. Yes, the Chargers did go to the Super Bowl, and they lost. Like Junior Seau, never went, never won a Super Bowl, even went to New England. They were undefeated during the regular season. Oh. And they lost because David Tyree is holding a ball on top of his helmet. I mean, that's mm. a guy that deserved to win a Super Bowl, but he never won. But he's one of the greatest defensive players of all time. Go ahead, uh, Nick. Yeah, so you know, I I told her, you know, it's it's, it's a debate because it depends on which. What do you want to talk about? I was like, but I was like, if you if, if I just said who's the best athlete, just the you know, it's kind of like you could say Mike Tyson was a great boxer, but you know he had his element and then he was done. You know, or would you say Muhammad Ali, who was more skill than actual true like punch power? You know, uh, you know, it's it, funny because it, I I actually saw a, like a, a clip of a. I, I don't know what maybe it was it Letterman or something. I forgot what the fuck it was. It was, it was they, Letterman. Yeah, no, they no, had, I'm, I'm thinking someone else. No, go ahead. They had um, uh, Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson were on together, and uh, they're like, and they're like, so who would win? <laughs> and Muhammad Ali's like, I can't hit that hard. He, right. he goes, I would, I, I, I could move, but I couldn't hit that hard. Right, he was good. Yeah, he, he was really a middleweight, even though he was right. a heavyweight, and he, that's why he was just fast, and he could just, he had such great reflexes. I mean, that's really what boxing is. So you could say that Ali was better as a true boxer, but yeah, you get, you get, uh, Ty, Tyson gets to you in the first three rounds, you're fucked. It's you know? when he lost focus, you know, yeah. and he lost to Buster Douglas. It, it just kind of spiraled his group but there was a time people didn't want to fight him i it's mean they didn't, want, they didn't want to get in the ring with him I, I can still remember when he fought was it michael spinks or the other his brother I forget who it was Leon. i ran I, I ran down we were in an apartment ran down to the uh uh vending machine to get a couple of cokes came back up and i go I go, it's over. Over. <laughs> I go i go it's over it just started they go yeah he knocked him out so michael spink no, no leon, leon. Was, it, no leon was the it was Michael Spinks because Leon Spinks was the his brother. No, so Michael Spinks and I. So Logan Paul is Logan Paul and Mike Tyson are, are have signed a contract to to, to have like a That's crazy. exhibition boxing match. I think I think Tyson will kill him. Even, well, even at his age, I think he'll still. He's kill training. Him. Have you seen? Apparently, him training? apparently the, the rules are wild, and I, I I heard this. I don't know. I I didn't. You can't verify hit me here. It. No, I, I didn't here. verify this, right? <laughs> and then I don't know. I honestly don't know. But like, 
I guess um, Logan Paul can wear a helmet. Jake, Jake Paul. Jake Paul? Oh, yeah. Jake Paul is allowed to wear a helmet, like a, like a sparring helmet. Um, and I also th- I heard, and I don't know if this is a joke, but I heard that he can tag in somebody else to fight, oh, too. Oh, bullshit. Like, yeah, oh. Like, like a tag team thing. You know what I do right away? Tag. <laughs> but like the, the the rumors are are spilling around that Logan Paul, his brother, who's in the WWE, might jump into the ring too with him. I don't know if that's true. Like that was one like TikTok that I, I watched and they were talking about it, mm-hmm. and I was like, "That's fucking crazy." Yeah. Like well, this is just the, an absolute it's for money. joke. It's for pure money, so it's yeah. Going going to your, I I would pick Muhammad Ali as the best uh, fighter of all time. Yeah. Okay. I mean, from fighters that I saw, I mean, I can't go back in the fifties and, you know, yeah. I mean, I've always, I've always preferred Joe Frazier, uh, over Ali. Smoking Joe Frazier. Uh, I mean, cause I, you know, it's things that you don't know, like, you know, Frazier bought a boxed his entire career with one eye, you know, you're like, holy shit. He was still that good. Yeah. Uh, and I, I fully believe Rocky that for, I, I fully believe that for Joe Frazier won the third bout. You know, even though they gave it to Ali in decision, I think that, uh, you know, he won the first one. And I think he won the third one. I would kick his ass. <laughs> anyway, so, okay, so back, back to football. So what I told her was, you know, it'll change day to day who I would pick. I was like, but I think I'm just as a pure athlete, I would go with Bo Jackson. Oh, uh, Bo even, Jackson. Even though he didn't last long, but he's playing for the Royals. You know, he was playing baseball and football at the same fucking time. I, uh, I, did, a, I did a video a while back about – who the greatest athlete of all time was, and I said Bo Jackson. Yeah, it is because he excelled. He was he he was a Hall of Famer. Unfortunately, got hurt. He yeah. was a Hall of Famer at both sports. Both sports. Yeah. I mean, if he doesn't if, get if he, he, he should have yeah, exactly. quit. He he yeah. If he if he quits football and says, "Okay, I, I, this is stupid to be playing both sports," I mean, he doesn't even get a break. He just goes from football to baseball, mm-hmm. and like I said, that freak tackle that ruined his you know tore up his hip. And he still came back, hit 25, 26 homers. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just a pure specimen of a man. I mean, that's yeah. just that's just how it seemed. But then I was like, yo, know, I was like, but then I was like, yo, know, but then again, I also I'm also very partial to Walter Payton. I was like, I, I love him. I thought he was great if he could have stayed healthy as well. Um, and then you know, my dad chimed in, he's like, What about Joe Montana and Tom Brady? I was like, Well, that's a different thing. You know, I was like, it's a you know, I'm just talking about pure athlete, you know, and then you go yeah. you get you talk about someone like Peyton Manning, who's not that great of an athlete. But he was just so smart with the game. That's what made him a good quarterback. When you get a noggin that big, of course you're gonna be smart. Yeah, he's got that forehead. Yeah, advertise on it. It's it's tough because again, it's a team game. I mean, obviously you can go with uh, like Montana and and Brady, but you got to start talking about uh, Mahomes. Yeah, yeah. What's sure. his? Name? I mean, if he wins, if they win the Super Bowl three straight years, which has never happened, you're right? Three Pete. Wow. Anyway, I don't know. It's 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 one of those things that it's great. It's a great thing because you can go in a bar and you can argue while you're drinking the whole time, mm-hmm. right? Because everyone's going to have a different opinion. Yeah. And and then going back to like athletes who never made it, you know, but that are unbelievable. Even cords keep jerking on the computer around. Um, you know, uh, Barry Sanders is. Oh my God! Yeah. You know, oh yeah. He's, he's he's. My dad was like, "Oh, Emmitt Smith or Barry Sanders?" Like, no. Like Barry Sanders is way better than Emmitt Smith. I mean, Emmitt Smith was a great running back. I was like, but he had one hell of a team. He had, like, a, he, had a, he had a wall blocking for him. Not that exactly. he not that he didn't earn the yards. Right. But I was like, and he played a lot more years. I was like, he had like, a Hall of Fame like, coach, like, Hall of Fame quarterback, Hall of Fame offensive lineman. Yeah. And what did what did Barry Sanders have? Barry Sanders. Barry had Barry Sanders. That's all he had. Yeah. There was no one more fun to watch than Barry Sanders. I mean the fridge. Yeah, okay. Short yards. <laughs> In the end, no All right, John. Fuck you. I, I saw I saw Barry Sanders at the Holiday Bowl. He was just amazing. It, it, and he retired. At least he retired with you know his health. Yeah. He, he quit early. He's just like going, "This is bullshit. My yeah. team sucks. Yeah. Why, why are we trying?" So you got to so, respect someone who does that. And it's funny to me, like you know, uh, I know we've mentioned this years ago, and this is probably more of a Matt conversation. But you know, I always thought. It, what a waste with, you know, you had Peyton Manning and Marshall Falk on the, the Colts. And it's like, <laughs> you know, one hell of a duo there. Well, they traded Marshall Falk. They did. As I was like, who does that? You know, it's like. Uh, uh. I was, was some guy on Twitter, some magazine put the 10 most uh, 
10 guys that should have won the Heisman and never did. And he had a the Heisman, one, two, three, the Heisman trophy. They were the best players and never won. I go, but man, yeah. and he didn't have Marshall Falk on this list. I go, oh, he didn't. I go, not only do you not have Marshall Falk number one, you don't even have him on your list. How is this possible? Hmm. I mean, he was, a, I mean, obviously I'm biased, but he was a great running back and great player. What are you going to do? But basketball player, I mean, who would you go as best basketball player? Jordan. Jordan. Jordan, yeah. I, Bird Although there, there is an argument. There is an argument for Larry Bird. He made the team – he made his players better around him. He did. I mean, I, I – the way I look at it is, you know, you have, you have uh, Chamberlain and Dr. J. Then you have uh, – I'm not talking about order. I'm just talking about, like, you know, the people who – Well, you got to put Bill Russell in there, you too. Be able to, yeah, yeah. Real, yeah, but then, like, I think Magic Johnson and Larry Bird took the NBA to a whole new level. Oh, yeah. And, like, getting really people to watch, getting the, the competition – the people to really love the, the, the league. The league was dying. It was dying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was and then, dying. And then when Jordan came along, you know, instead of having like the the competitions, you just had like this one guy. that's like I'm going to kick your ass. Like I'm going to yeah. kick all of your asses. And if you don't acknowledge that I'm going to kick your ass, then I'm just going to jam it down your throat. You know, and it's just, <coughs> you know, and you don't see that anymore because I mean, you can still, you know, people will still argue Shaq or Kobe or, or even LeBron, but it's like. Kobe to me is an extremely talented player, uh, but you know he kind of was just emulating Jordan. And then uh, LeBron to me is is not that good. I think he's not. I don't even think he's in the top five Lakers of all time. Like, Whoa. Uh, okay. Uh, I, well, I, I just, well, that you know that you got Jerry West, you got Magic Johnson, you got Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, James Worthy. Worthy. Well, I don't yeah. know. No, Chamberlain. Chamberlain. Yeah, I don't know if I put James Worthy of, ahead of. Uh, you got, got Kobe. You got you got you oh, got Kobe. Some, yeah, there's your there's your five. That's I mean, you've got so many just unbelievable. Like, I I think I, I I forget who said it. It could have been Barkley. It could have been someone talking about LeBron. <coughs> LeBron is probably the most naturally gifted player to ever play the NBA. As in, like, just he just could do it naturally. But as in an actual team player, an actual someone who wants to push himself. He's not that guy. He's not Jordan. He's not the guy that's like, you might be a little bit better than me, but I'm going to prove that I'm better than you. You know, he doesn't have that drive that Jordan had. And I think that's why people tend to gravitate toward Jordan because that's what a true athlete is, is that even though I might not be better than you right now, I'm going to be, you know. Yeah, he, uh, John, the retired guys, I think he's talking about Jordan, the Dave Stewart of basketball. Yeah, Dave Stewart, that's who got me kicked off Twitter. I mean, he didn't do it, but he's saying – you know, because when Dave Stewart was a pitching coach for the Padres, like we saw his joke, throw strikes or I'll kill you. Because he just had that stare. <laughs> right, right, when, right. when the pitchers were walking, guys, he'd just go. But he had that squeaky Jimmy Page voice. Mm. So, he, so he didn't have to say anything because he was intimidating. And Chris, last week, I, I, it was last week or the week before, I said that Larry Bird, the Clippers traded the number one pick. For Larry yeah. Bird. What mm. happened was, I looked it up. I was wrong. The owner, when he left uh, Boston to bring the team to San Diego, he could have taken – Larry Bird with them. He chose. He said he wouldn't do that. Oh, because Larry Bird had was drafted a year early, and so they they held his rights. Hmm. So technically, it. it's the Boston Red Sox. The Boston Celtics moved to San Diego, hmm. and the Buffalo Braves moved to the Celtics. So technically, San Diego has like nine <laughs> banners and stuff like that. So. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because if you if you go put if you Google technically this. Did the Celtics play in San Diego? It all shows up. So, you know, so don't say we don't have any rings in San Diego. Larry Bird was a fucking mean, mean, that was, that was mean the era, man. Though. Yeah, that, yeah. I, that's, I love watching those 70s, yeah. 80s games where it's just like, you know what, you pushed me the wrong way, I'm going to beat your fucking ass. Yep. But how, you know, how, I, many, I, how many years did we lose from Larry Bird because he took such a beating from the Pistons? He did. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was just, just like, team, though. Yeah. of course, you had Kevin McHale who clotheslined people. Right. I, I actually, I, I, you know, I yearn to those awesome. days. I, the, dude, I love Mikhail. Mikhail, uh, the chief, dude. Oh my God. Um, Robert Parrish. Yeah, Robert Parrish, the chief. Dennis Johnson. Oh, Danny Ainge. Ainge was a. He was a. He was a. Hmm. I don't want to use those words on podcasts. He, he, he was Cancel. a BYU boy. Yeah, yeah. Well, well he played. He played for the Blue Jays and 
There's a funny there's a funny story I was I was listening to on um on the uh there's a grateful <laughs> dead story. So Bill Walton, um huge deadhead, like huge deadhead. Uh and he was like he oh yeah, completely. And he would tour, he has tour, I think he's seen the, the dead like probably a thousand shows or something like that. But uh when he played for, for Boston and it was like Larry Bird, um Mikhail Parrish um, uh, what's his name? Um, oh my God. Uh, he's, he was the announcer for forever. I'm, I'll, I'll think of his oh, name. Right, right. Uh, Cedric Maxwell, um, yeah. Cedric Cornbread. Maxwell, all those guys, um, cornbread, right? Yeah. So the, uh, <laughs> the grateful dead came to town and they're all like, Hey, can you take us to this the grateful dead show? Let's go. Let's go to the grateful dead show. So they, they because Bill, uh, Bill Walton had like a connection with Jerry and, and all those guys. Um, so they, they actually, what's that? He brought them their pot. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so they actually, um, like the grateful dead created like a, a walled off section to like stage left and right in front of the stage specifically for the Celtics players. Nice. So they all went to the show. I think it was at, it was actually at the Boston, um, uh, what do you call it? The garden, uh, which is no longer, the garden. The garden. no longer the garden anymore. Um, and they spinning? all they all fucking like went crazy and, and became huge fans of the dead ever since. But the story goes that they, the the whole pregame started at Larry Bird's house and they all got shit faced. <laughs> and apparently, uh, Danny Ainge's wife wouldn't let him go. Oh. Wow! <laughs> so, so he was the only one that didn't join them into like their special VIP Celtics corner of the the Grateful Dead stage. Everyone's bringing their dick. Can I bring mine? Nope. <laughs> is it Sam Kennison? <laughs> yeah, she says no fucking way. She said no. <laughs> fucking Sam Kennison. I, I I still like uh I still like um Kevin McHale on Cheers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, that was another show that I, I I'm considering <gasps> going and doing a rewatch of is it, Cheers. It's hard, like uh, because on Hulu, uh, they only have the Diane seasons on Hulu. Oh, really? really? Yeah, and it's not every episode either. Like, there's like two or three missing from each season. You know? I like I like the uh, Rebecca episodes better. I like the Rebecca. I think well, it, it, it's a different show. It's a more comedy. Let's it's see just, it, what it's different. Yeah. If they're on Apple TV, or that that one where they're they're, they're on the they're on the parquet floor of the uh, garden, garden, and they 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 say how many bolts you think are in here, <laughs> and they keep trying to count it, and and then Kevin McHale's playing, and he's like. What's he doing out there? He's counting the bolts. Count the bolts. <laughs> <laughs> and then they forgot to put one of them back, and the thing slipped. And uh, I, I, got hurt. I always think of uh, Celtic Pride. It's like a guilty pleasure. Oh my god! Great oh yeah, movie. yeah. I, yeah. I, Who's in that? I saw that. Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. Oh, yeah. And uh, the guy from uh, uh, Home Alone and uh, City Slickers. Um, okay. I, I forget what his name is, but uh, he, he, the, the guy that's in uh, For All Mankind, season four. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the guy who's the runs NASA. Yeah, him. And yeah. Uh, and then of course, uh, uh, Damon Wayans is a uh, like the Jordan character, uh, but they play for the Jazz instead. But, uh, so you can like- buy the entire Cheer set for forty bucks. Oh wow! For all eleven seasons, but it does appear to be streamable on Paramount Plus. If you've got that, I don't. Care. I do have Paramount Plus. Um, yeah. So let's say it's all available on Paramount Plus or thirty nine ninety nine. If you want to buy it to own it, I forgot to answer. Uh, I'm uh, oh, only slightly disgruntled. And then, of course, John, the retired guy. <laughs> yeah, I was happy with that trade, Chris. It, it turned out better than I thought. It was at first. I was like, oh, the names they were talking about. No, no, I hate trading young players. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cease, I, I, cease. I said, I go, I go. Okay, what did we have to give up? I said, Oh my God, no, what, 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 what. Anyway, oh, we were talking about greatest baseball players. I, the argument I like today is people say Shohei Otani is so much better than Babe Ruth. Did we say Babe what? We don't think we've discussed greatest. Baseball. No, I'm not. People, people, we have fucking it. Ted Williams. People will discuss that all the time. And if, if you look at because they say he's a two way player, mm. and I'm like going, yeah, but you look at Babe Ruth, his pitching numbers are amazing. Yeah, yeah, and then he he just well, stopped pitching because well. Yeah, he's too fat. Home runs, and he, well, he wouldn't even get fat till the end. But uh, you look at his numbers by far. 
people go, oh, show how you're talking to this and that and this and that. I go, yeah, okay, but you know. Yeah, it was funny. Like, I've, you know, I, I heard that before from John Good. Wade Boggs. <laughs> nice, Boggs, yeah. dude. Oh, I fucking love Wade Boggs. Uh, I only I, like him for the chicken. I'd heard that from uh, from John Goodman. He said, whenever they ask me, like, is there a role that you'd like to revisit or redo? And he always says, it's the babe. You know, he said, I, I didn't have enough time to prep for that role. He goes, there's so many things I would have loved. It was to too clownish. Yeah, it was too clownish. Yeah, but he said, like, even like, you know, even though he only pitched a few times in the movie, he goes, the way I pitch is not the way the babe pitched. You know, he goes, I no. just kind of, you know, he's like, he goes, everything about it is wrong, what I'm doing. You know, and he goes, and so he goes, I just don't like that movie. Um, it's just interesting to hear an actor talk about that, you know, 30 years later. Right. Yeah, it, it's, I mean, it's, but anyway, I, I just say, I'm not, Shohei Tani is not a great player, but he hasn't done what Babe Ruth did. Nope. There's yeah. there's baseball in New York because well, yeah, of Babe Ruth. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because to me, I, I think it's one of those things where it's an argument of <clears throat> eras. You know, era. You know, it's a different era. Baseball is completely different. They <coughs> they played less games. They played day games. There's so many things that have changed since then. It's hard to put. To me, it's almost African like Americans whole, weren't allowed to play baseball back then. Yeah, like there's so many things that are just different. You know, because like even Ty Cobb. There's so many guys. It's like they're great for their day. You know, but there's right. but there's but there there's some players that would be good, no matter what the era. I mean, they're mm-hmm. just they just. I mean, Babe Ruth was a man. You know, he was huge, and there's Ted Williams, player, greatest Ted baseball Williams, player. Yeah, of course, because you know why. Why is the greatest baseball player of all time? He's frozen. No, why is oh. the greatest baseball player of all time? He was born in San Diego. <laughs> Jesus I, I I knew it was coming. I just didn't want to say it. <laughs> Ted Williams, Teddy Baseball. Teddy Ball game. He's the one that told Tony Gwynn, he goes, you need to start pulling the ball more. <laughs> you, should, you should be hitting home runs. Oh, man, it's true. We did last 51 minutes so far. We, but we anyway, we got talking about sports, and that's what threw me off. I did want to say one thing. I do have Michael Jack ball. Smith. Good player, Michael Jack Smith. Uh, Tony and I are going on a walk. We're walking, and all of a sudden she goes, is that lady walking a pig? What the fuck? And the lady, it was a, it was a pig. The lady was walking a pig. <laughs> so I, I had to say that. I mean, it's just like, it, and when it poop, it poop. She picked up the poop on like most of the people that don't pick up the dog poop. They just let their dogs. Uh-huh. Well, poop I, everywhere. I remember like twenty years ago when it became trendy to move to Nashville. You know, and I remember someone saying that to me, going like, "I saw some fucker walking a pig." In the middle of Nashville, and they had a little fucking bandana around the pig's neck. He's like, is this, <laughs> "Is this what we're becoming? Just people think I'm going to move to Nashville and just be a stereotype?" I think so. <laughs> I think, well, you know, that was my first move to Raleigh. I thought I had to get a pig, oh. but you know. <laughs> well, I figured you dressed up your Sunday best and and go to Raleigh like that. Exactly, because that's what Andy and that's what they all did. Going to Raleigh, you got to get all Sunday, and I I just don't get it. But anyway. <laughs> I think at this point we're going to wrap it up because the people in the chat, well, John, we do, we do have three emails. Just oh, we do have three emails. Well, yeah. then let's do the emails first. All right. All right. So the first one is from Maggie. Maggie. Hey, Maggie. Maggie. Hey, Jack, Nick, Matt, and Chris. Last week, Nick talked about selling the Lego Death Star. It was not a Lego Death Star. It was a Hasbro Death Star. Uh, and Chris mentioned he needs to sell his Mac. Yeah. I, was, I was asked to help an elderly friend selling their iPad that they aren't using anymore. What is the best way to do that? I've used Facebook Marketplace to sell a microwave, but that wasn't as expensive as an iPad. I haven't. Okay, go ahead. Chris, you had an answer to that. So. <coughs> um, there's plenty of places you can go, depending on what how old the iPad or the devices are. I would check the retailer in which you're buying the new device from and see if they do a trade in um, mm-hmm. at that place. There's also a um, a great online resource that I've used before um, and I highly recommend. It's it's essentially like eBay specifically for devices. It's called Swappa S W A P P A. Um, it's a great service to use and trust that you're not getting scammed. Um, John, what an asshole. <laughs> The uh, there, he says, will beat up your elderly friend. Uh, and for me, with the Mac, I'm actually going through. Um, I, I forgot the. It's. Uh, I'll actually hang on. I'll tell you right now. Um, I found it through um, just doing some searching. And it's, a, it's an affiliate of a of a website that I actually really like called uh, 
from OWC or other other world computing, MaxSales.com, a uh, really great company, re- reliable company. They actually have an offshoot called SellYourMac.com that I'm selling my Mac to, and it's uh, very trusted, highly highly rated on Trustpilot, if you will. Um, so yeah, plenty of places to go. Um, you're always going to get the most money if you do like a private sale on your own, but that's a pain in the ass. And then depending on who it is, it's like I said, like I sold <clears throat> that Death Star for twenty two fifty. Uh, eBay took three hundred and oh yeah, something from it, uh, and then to ship it to Brooklyn cost me two hundred and thirty dollars. It's wild. So it's uh, yeah, it's expensive. <clears throat> of course, that was a big a big ass toy though. Um, all right, the last bit. I haven't watched Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul, but I've been thinking about it since you've been talking about it both so much. Uh, thanks for the laughs, Maggie the Magnificent. Nice, yeah, I definitely. Would, and I, I would take uh, Nick. I hate to admit Nick was right, but I would go. I'd watch Better Call Saul first. Yeah, be, because the, the suspense of who, you know, you don't know. There's so many people who could die, and then of course they don't because they're in Breaking Bad. So anyway, that's I. I hate to. I hate to say. Nick yeah, I would, right. I, no, I, I would agree 100% so far from my watch. I would 100% watch uh, Better Call Saul first. And all three of you thought I was nuts for the longest time. No, no I, just, I didn't no, say we, that. I, I, I hadn't I, seen it. I, I thought you were nuts because you hadn't watched Breaking Bad when it was out. That's that's nuts. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that you know, you're, but you are right about the order. And I'm not going to say it again, so move on. <laughs> all right, we have two more, both from Randy. Randy? And he's also in chat. The first one is titled Switzerland. In honor of Jack's roots, a question. What's the best thing about Switzerland? The women. Beautiful women. <laughs> Beautiful I, scenery. I don't know, but the flag has a big plus. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, and this is more of a, tr- a, a traditional email. They're very nice in Switzerland. I'll say that. They are. And you, it's kind of like... Uh, you can probably so, see it from me. Yeah. And you, you only have to have a few beers to get hammered because it's so high up. True. Uh, all right. <clears throat> the next one is a proper email. And it's titled San Antonio. San Antonio. Hi, gents and Chris. <laughs> they did not say that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just thought you might like to know that there is a 1953 Western film called San Antonio. The plot revolves around a Confederate Army officer at the time of the Civil War. Has Jack seen San Antonio? I don't think so. First, I'm up to age. I don't remember a lot of things, but I don't think I've seen it. I don't know any of these actors like Rod Cameron, Arlene, Whelan, Forrest Tucker. Well, Forrest Tucker was in. Yeah, uh, Forrest Tucker. Yeah. And that was that name. As I was reading it, I was like, that sounds familiar. But yeah, you definitely could tell the poster is an old 50s poster, you know. Yeah. San Antonio. San Antonio. Yeah, I told you they say San Antonio. Just a stereotype. Anyway, yeah, that's our three emails. Thanks for writing in, everybody. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Thanks for everyone who joined us in the chat. Uh, we had a great time night, except for John. We just don't care. We might start muting John, right? We just don't care. I don't care. No, nah. especially about John. Yeah, John's hey. always been nice to me. <laughs> Kiss ass, but I still don't care. <laughs> he's nice to you. Yeah, Careful. he's always been nice to me. Chris might beat up your air. Oh yeah, yeah. Fuck you, line. John. <laughs> Did you forget already? <laughs> I forgot about that. No, nah, it's okay. We we liked a little give and take, and Matt should be back next week. Second fan favorite. And we'll discuss who won the final versus. He doesn't care either. Yeah. I had a question. So, like, what do you guys want to do? Like, after we announce who won the last of the four, do you just want to combine the points? Sort of like, you know, if you so if you get first, you get four points. If you get no, second, you no. get, or you, or do you, you want to allow all the whole band together and let the audience vote again? Yeah, put the band together. It's like, you know, who, who who's the got singer, the best band? The, yeah. yeah. Okay. But no, I think it should be who we all picked. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to say, who... yeah, just say, like, all right, here's band number one with these four people. Here's band number two with these four yeah. people. And yeah. All right. Cool. 
Anyway. There should be um, a poll. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, Randy. Yeah, that's what I thought too, but I thought Matt was yeah. against it when I first proposed that, so I wasn't sure. Well, because he can't do a Matt pick. <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's try to get this. Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna be over before those emails threw me off. Anyway, uh, thanks for joining us. If you want to become a patron, become a patron. To go to jnjack.com, become a patron. Do we have to do another commercial break? No, no, we're good. Okay, but we want to thank all our patrons. But we're going to thank four patrons right now. They reach a certain level: Eckhart Richter, Glafflor, Maggie the Magnificent, Joanne with Plan, and Ed the Creepy Poopy Letter Carrier. Thanks for what you do, and we'll be back next Thursday night. Sure. Sure. With a new banana design. That's all we got. I'm out. Bye, everyone. See ya. See ya.